The father used a cigarette to pierce the balloons held by the children. He saw the children running away and still went after them to pierce the balloons. Because the children were not playing with any balloons, but with condoms, he and his wife had hidden under their pillows. Dark Eye and his wife drove car, have three children. On this day, he borrowed a breeding sheep from a friend to improve the situation of his flock, looking at the ram's strong horns and tight body. The family was happy, especially Drolkar. She thought the ram resembled her husband and that they were full of energy. Dark Eye said with some confusion how he could compete with this ram. Then he rushed into the sheep pen and got down on the ground and grabbed a ewe and showed off his strength. Drolkar was a bit confused as to what he was doing. The ewe was quite honest. So why did it grab her? But Dark Eye said the ewe hadn't given birth in two years. So what was the point of being honest? He has always believed that ewes are meant to give birth. Once a ewe is unable to give birth, it is useless. Drolkar disagreed, but didn't argue. After all, her position in the family was not much different from that of a ewe. The next day, Drolkar went to the hospital to ask the doctor for some more balloons. Because she had enough trouble with her three sons at home, she had to take this matter seriously. But the female doctor she knew was not there, so she was too embarrassed to say what she wanted. Drolkar would rather sit for six hours to wait for the female doctor to come back. It turns out that she came here today to get some balloons and had another idea. She wanted birth control. She really didn't want to live a life where she had to worry about pregnancy every day. But the doctor laughed shyly at her words. <laughs> it so happened that several other women in the village also wanted to have birth control. The doctor asked Drolkar to come to the hospital with a few other women afterwards. Drolkar had a sister named Drama who had become a nun while waiting for her nephew to leave class. Drama was drawn to the poem written on the blackboard. A wise man meets an intelligent man that makes things more clear. She was wondering what it meant when she saw a familiar face. He was her nephew's teacher named Jail, but her first reaction to seeing Jail was not to walk up to him, but to turn around humbly and hit her gaze under the brim of her hat. The two of them seemed to have a past that they didn't want to talk about. Jail knew her difficulties and didn't try to keep her. He exchanged a few pleasantries with her and left. But before he left, he handed Drama a book. Maybe he had a lot to say to Drama. But there is always an invisible force behind them that holds them back. So he could only use words to explain his inner self. But that day Drama came home and found that the book Jail had given her was missing. She rummaged around in her sister's bed and accidentally found something strange under the covers. She picks up the strange plastic bag and asks her sister what it is. But after hearing the answer, she regretted and immediately threw it back to the bed. It turned out to be a condom that her sister had hidden under her pillow. Drama had already become a nun, so she didn't care about worldly objects. So she went back to the fire and read a book in silence. When her sister saw it, she asked Drama what she was reading. But as soon as she saw the picture of the man on the front page of the book, she suddenly became emotional. <laughs> then her sister threw the book into the fire. Drama saw it and panicked and tried to find something to save the books from burning. But it was too late. So Drama put her hand into the fire to get the book, not caring about the heat. It turned out that the book contains the story of Drama and Giles' past. Drama at first was ready to never see him again in her life, but there are many things in this world that no one can tell. The scene where she runs her burned hand over the torn cover is so powerful and moving. Drokar wanted to use fire to control Drama's emotions, but the emotions that drove Drama to take the book from the fire were perhaps more passionate than the fire. And Giles had also felt panic for Drama. This day he approached her, and tried to explain the misunderstanding between him and Drama. But he was stopped by Trollkar in order to make Drama give up on him completely. She decided to return the burned book to him. Giles stands in front of a pile of fuel while waiting for her to return for the book, but cannot light a cigarette. He refused to take the book, but Trollkar said forcefully that either you take the book or I burn it. He took the book and flipped through it in disappointment. It turned out that his cigarette was not easy to be lit, but the book was burned so easily. Looking at the incense ash scattered between the books, he gave up explaining completely. Dark Eye had borrowed a breeding goat from a friend to improve the family income. Now it was time to return the sheep to him. The friend hosted Dark Eye and his son with great hospitality, but their party was in full swing when they suddenly received the sad news that Dark Eye's father had died. The painful news hit Dark Eye's lonely soul. In the midst of the Solemn Sutra, 
he carried his father's body to the van. When it was over, Argai personally met with the Guru and asked him about his father's reincarnation. The Guru touched the Buddha's beads in his hand and said, If you recite this sutra properly, then the spirit will be reincarnated back to your home. Dargai thought it was a good thing, but Drokar didn't agree. There was no other woman in the family and she had no intention of having another child, so how could Darka's father have been reincarnated back into their family? As the two of them wondered, the next day's news confirmed the Guru's words. This time Drogar was really pregnant, but she no longer wanted to have any more children. The woman had already given birth to three children, and now she was pregnant again. She tried to have an abortion, but was slapped in the face by her husband and given a serious warning. Because her husband believed that the baby was the reincarnation of his father. And it's not just Dark Eye who believes this. The rest of her family believes it too. Even her sister, who had become a Buddhist nun, urged her to give birth to the baby since the spirit of the dead had chosen her. Then to deny his birth would be to put him in pain. Drokar was still hesitant to give birth to the baby. But in the evening, the slap in the face she received during the argument with her husband reawakened her. Although her husband had his own considerations, she also had her own ideas. Under the birth control policy of the time, she had to pay a huge amount of money for overbirth and overbreeding. Now they were overwhelmed with three sons. If she had another child, her life would have been harder and harder. The financial pressure was so great that droll cars finally aborted the baby. But just then, her husband and her oldest son rushed straight into the operating room. The abortion had to be suspended. Drokar was left with tears of despair. She couldn't escape her fate after all. After leaving the hospital, the couple never spoke to each other again. Some time later, in the early hours of the morning, Drokar made an important decision. She was going to follow her sister to the temple. Some say Drokar was going to have an abortion. Others thought she was going to become a monk. But either way, Drokar made her own choice. And after his wife left, Dark Eye's life was like losing half his soul. His carefully bred sheep didn't fetch a good prize. His oldest son didn't want to go to school either. He couldn't understand how his life had come to this. When he came back from the county, he passed a balloon stall. He brought back real balloons for his two young sons. The two bright red ones shone brightly in the gray background. But the once harmonious family is no longer the same today. Then one of the red balloons suddenly burst, and the other one flew into there. This is the end of the film called Balloon. The balloon is the most important symbol of the film. It is the toy that the Dark Eye family's two young sons are longing for. It is the couple's secret condom. It is also the growing belly of the wife after her accidental pregnancy. In fact, the balloon itself is the container of desire. A child's desire is the instant gratification of childhood pleasure. The desires of adults are carnal desires, fertility, survival, and faith. If the balloon, a symbol of fertility control, holds a fleshly lust, then people will not have the burden of overbirth. Then family livelihoods can be maintained with relative ease. But if the balloon does not hold the fleshly lust, the wife's body becomes another balloon to carry the responsibility of whether the family will be overborn or not. It also becomes a vessel for the family's recently deceased elderly to be reborn as human beings again.